Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to demonstrate the Engrave Zero offline cold wallet, along with the Graphene backup solution to safely store your private key. So let's get started. All right, so I'm here on the homepage of Engrave. Engrave is a company that makes one of the most secure offline hardware wallets that you can get right now. The Engrave cold wallet generates a private key safely and securely completely offline, and it uses a combination of a random number generator, your biometric information, and the ambient light to generate a completely random key. So it's a really cool solution. I'm going to unbox it for you. I'm going to get it set up, backed up, and then I'll do some demos with transferring some crypto into the wallet from some other solutions like Ledger. And I'll show you how to do a transfer from a cryptocurrency exchange into the wallet. It's a great combination of a highly secure offline cryptocurrency cold wallet and a company that excels in customer service. You don't see that very often in the cryptocurrency wallet space. As you can see here, they have a 30-day return policy, free shipping, and exceptional customer service. So if you're really serious about your cryptocurrency security, this is a great wallet. It's also EAL7 certified, one of the highest levels of certification in the financial industry. It's also impenetrable by design, anti-tampering protection against physical attacks. And as I mentioned, it has a biometric and light sensor built in. What's really cool about it is that it's completely offline, right? There's no Wi-Fi, no USB, no NFC, no Bluetooth whatsoever. It is a completely air-gapped cryptocurrency hardware wallet solution. As I mentioned, it has that EAL uh, certification and biometric security. Has its own custom operating system. So it's a really cool device. Now I'm going to be demonstrating the combo pack where you have the zero device and the graphene metallic backup. We're gonna take security very seriously here. Uh, we've got this offline uh, cold wallet and a metallic backup solution that has two components that can be stored separately. Let's go ahead and unbox it and I'll show you how to get it set up. This is what it looks like when we first open it up. Okay. All right, and there we go. This is our device. It's got a little protective film here. All right, comes with a charging cable. So I'll go ahead and get it charged up before I generate the seed. This is the puncher that we're gonna use to record our backup phrase. A Little bit of swag here. Some uh, printed instructions. And the graphene here. All right, so you'll notice it's got these hole punches here, little knobs that we can use to put it together. So there's three main components to the wallet. We've got the zero, which is this device. We've got the graphene, which is our metal backup. And we also have liquid, which is the companion app, which we'll be using as well. All right, so we'll start with getting the zero set up. So the first thing I'll do is uh, charge it up a bit. So I have this USB charging block that I'm gonna to use to charge up the device before I get started. But you have a little cover here that you can remove and just let it charge up. All right, and so I have a little indicator over there that it's charging. I'll just go ahead and let it charge up so that I can unplug it during the setup process. All right, so I've got the wallet charged up. I'll go ahead and disconnect the charging cable. So we've got a completely air gap device that we're gonna to use to generate our private key. And notice that they've got support for several languages. All right, so choose your language and hit next. There's the terms and conditions. We're gonna read that. This is our zero device, so we'll hit next. All right, so the first thing we'll wanna do is verify the device. So we're gonna to go to this website. We'll click verify and then we'll scan the QR code on our zero. All right, and that's the, basically a genuine check to make sure that this device is in fact a genuine Engrave 
zero device. So well, let's handle that first. All right, we're back on the page here. So let's type in that web address that they asked us to do. So it's gonna be engrave.io slash verify. All right, they've given me a QR code. I have my device here. Basically what I wanna do is take my device and scan this QR code. All right, and after, they, after that, I'm, they're gonna give me a code on my device, which I will punch in. All right, so I'm just reading the code off my device. All right, and then I'll just click verify. All right, so we know we have a genuine device. So now we can continue on. All right, once we verified on their website, we'll just choose success. And then we're gonna choose our own personal pin for accessing the device. All right, and then hit next. Now you'll need to verify that. All right, now here comes the fun part. So we'll choose create new wallet here. Now, if you wanna go with a mnemonic wallet, you can tap here and it'll, it'll give you a traditional 24 word recovery phrase. That would be if you don't have a graphene solution and you just wanna use a regular backup phrase, which is fine as well. You're still gonna get super security with this device. You just won't have the ultimate backup key. Also, while we're on the subject of backups, uh, I just wanted to point out that the, the configuration of the numbers and letters on this uh, metal plate are unique. This is a one-of-a-kind metal plate. So mine does not look like anyone else's. Uh, and I have a special recovery key right here that I can use in case I lose this top plate. I can order another one if I need it. All right, so I'll choose an engrave wallet. And here's where we're going to introduce that additional entropy. Entropy just means how complicated or unique your key is, right? So the more entropy, the better. So uh, just a randomly generated number is great, but if it also uses additional uh, sources of entropy like my fingerprint or the ambient light uh, or my own uh, randomness, it's even better, right? So let's go through that. We'll hit next here. We'll uh, register our fingerprint, our unique fingerprint. We'll add personal entropy to this key. There's a fingerprint sensor on the back of the device here. So I'll use that. I can reach it here. Okay, it took a bit. I, uh, my suggestion is to push your finger as firmly as you can on, and hold it steady to give it time to accurately scan your finger. All right, and there we go. It's registered my fingerprint. Let's go ahead and tap next. All right, so let's go to the next step. We can also use our fingerprint to unlock the device and sign transactions, which is pretty cool. All right, and then we would need to enable that in the settings if we wanted to do that. Normally, I believe you would just use your pin. Let's hit next. All right, and uh, here we've got these random keys being generated. We can freeze this process. All right, we tap freeze, and then uh, we have frozen the process. There's a random key generator built into the device, secure element of the device. We have the entropy of our fingerprint, and then we also have the added entropy of choosing one of these numbers and the entropy of me stopping the, the number generation at uh, a, a place of my choosing. So we have a lot of entropy on this, the generation of this key. And as you can see, it's completely offline. It's not connected to anything. And we can uh, start it again if we want to. Once we're happy, we can just hit next. Okay, and then we can also choose one or more of these groups of keys and shuffle them. So I can select them like this, just a couple or more than that. All right, and then choose shuffle here. So that's pretty cool. All right, and once you've done that, you'll be presented with eight of these keys. And this is your, the private key of your wallet. And uh, once we've, we're happy with that, we'll hit next. And now that we have those uh, eight keys, we're going to punch them into our graphene. Now you'll notice that the graphene is divided into eight sections. 
And so you're going to get a key for each section. You might have the option of choosing which way you want to do it. If you want to do it backwards, bottom to top, whatever scheme you choose, please make sure you don't forget it. The best thing to do would probably just do left to right, top to bottom, like a book, right? Because we already have really good keys. Uh, don't make it so difficult. You're not going to remember how to get back to this if you ever need to do this restore. All right, so I have my punch here. Notice that each section has numbers and letters. For each character, we'll choose between a number and a letter. All right, so this is my first key. I'll uh, punch this key in, and then uh, I'll swipe to the next one. Ooh. <laughs> so you're gonna need to uh, put it in the correct uh, slot and push down until you hear that sharp click, right? And then you'll notice there that I've uh, put a hole in the back plate or a little indentation. So we'll just go along and handle that. And then we'll move to the next column for our next one. So be very careful as you're doing this. Make sure that you don't skip uh, columns. So uh, because it's a one time only. All right. And once you've finished your first one, you'll swipe and do your second one. And you are able to go back and look at your earlier ones if you need to. All right, once you get to the end screen, you can uh, just tap here. All right, and once you've uh, confirmed that you've recorded your seed, you'll end up on this screen. We'll go to the next. And here you just choose the assets that you want to manage. All right, I'll choose Bitcoin, Ethereum. I'll just do them all. all right, we, we even have more coins that we could add if we want. I'll stick with these coins for now. All right, so once you've chosen the coins you want, you'll hit next. All right, and now what we want to do is download the Liquid app and uh, sync it up to our device. They've given us a QR code there. All right, so we'll just open up the camera on our phone and scan in that QR code. And it'll take us over to the official app, All right? I'll choose the App Store and then just go ahead and download the app. Uh, we'll go to the next step on the zero, and then uh, we're going to scan the QR code from the zero. This is the export of the public key, right? Uh, this little uh, dynamic QR code is giving the app all of the information about the public-facing parts of the wallet, right? The private key never leaves the device. All right, they'll want us to create a passcode in the app. I'll go ahead and enable Face ID, and then uh, we'll go ahead and sync it up with zero, right? We'll just tap here, give it access to the camera, and scan. And there we go. So uh, these are the assets that I added. Uh, you can also store Ethereum-based NFTs in this wallet as well. Oh, uh, now we've got the wallet set up. Uh, after we've done the sync, we'll just move to the next and we're ready to go. And now we're back at the dashboard. So that's the initial setup. All right, so before we put some crypto in there, let's go ahead and update our firmware to the latest version. They have a process for upgrading the firmware here. We'll go ahead and click update and we'll go through the instructions here. So I've already created my perfect seed and I'm ready to go. We'll hit yes here. Okay, they give us the requirements. You can do this on Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. Make sure the zero is fully charged and that you've got your uh, cable. Make sure you've got your backup, which of course we've done. And we're gonna do Windows. Now they have a super secure way of doing this with cryptographic verification of the firmware update file and you run from the command line. It's a little involved. Uh, if you're uh, a little more security minded, you might want to try that. I'm just going to go ahead and do the suggested method using my Windows machine. So we'll just download the updater here. We can just drop this in our downloads folder. We'll click save here. All right, there's the setup. We'll just run the setup, except we'll go ahead and run this install here. Let it install in the, in the default location. 
All right, you'll notice it's doing that command line thing under the hood. We'll go ahead and trust engrave.io and go ahead and let it launch the firmware updater. Give us some information. Our data is going to stay safe during this. All right, an overview of the new features that they're going to add to this. All right, now we need to connect our device. So I have a USB cable here connected to my computer. I'll go ahead and connect it. All right, so once we've launched the updater, we need to, and our device is connected, we need to go to settings on the device, and then we choose firmware update. We say, I understand, and then we choose reboot. Let it do its thing. All right, I had to use my laptop because my desktop has so many devices. So um, the laptop was able to find it. Once it detects the device, you can go over here to continue and go ahead and run the update. All right, and this takes about 10 minutes. All right, so mine took less than 10. It took five minutes and 33 seconds. And uh, I can just click finish here. It looks like my device is also rebooting. We'll just finish this out. And now I'm done. And we'll go into the settings to double check that we're at the latest version of the firmware. If you remember, we're uh, trying to get up to version 1.3. All right, so when the device reboots, you can enter your PIN. And when you get back to the screen, you'll go to Settings and choose About This Device. And you can see there that we're running the latest version of the firmware. So we're good. So if we go to Add Coin, we should see some... And uh, now we have AVX in there if we want that. And I believe they also support Polygon as well. Um, actually, it probably would be under Matic. There we go. So there's added functionality uh, to support more coins. Blockchains are always changing. Devices always are being improved and updated. So it's best practice to keep your device at, up to the latest firmware. Uh, we can go to the settings and choose sync with app. So we'll go back over to the app and then up in the top here, there's a sync icon. We'll just tap that. And then we'll go ahead and rescan this code now that we've added those other two assets. All right, now you can see that the, those two additional assets are in there. All right, and as I was showing you, you can generate a receiving address for Bitcoin on the device, but you can also manage your uh, assets directly from the Liquid app. So you can generate addresses directly from the app. If we do a receive, and you'll notice that this is the same Bitcoin address that showing on the zero device. All right, so you can do everything from the app as far as uh, managing your crypto, looking at your current prices, uh, generating receiving addresses, all that good stuff. Uh, it's much more convenient, but if you want that extra verification step of just looking at the zero device for your receiving address, that's a good extra step if you want to take that. All right, and uh, once we have the receiving address on our device, we can just copy that into our clipboard. And if we've got the Ledger Live app, we can do this phone uh, app to app. All right, so all you have to do here is go over to Ledger Live. Okay, we'll go to the home screen, hit all assets. And then we'll go down to one of our Bitcoin accounts. And I'll do a small test from here. Always good to do a small test transaction first. We're going to do a send, and then we'll paste in that code that we got from our Engrave app. Pasting from Engrave into Ledger. We'll allow paste, and then continue. And then I'll just go ahead and send all of that Bitcoin over. All right, it's just a small test transaction. All right, now before we do a send, we'll need to have our device ready. I've got my device powered up, and it's at the home screen. So now I'm ready to go ahead and send that Bitcoin. I'll hit continue, right? And I'll just let it stay at the uh, default medium blockchain fee. I'll hit continue here. All right, now it's using Bluetooth. It wants me to open the Bitcoin app. All right, and now I need to authorize the transaction on my Ledger. Ledger is my current hardware wallet. Maybe you have a Ledger too and you'd like to move over to Engrave. So uh, I'm going to review the output by scrolling through from the right button until I get all the way over to approve. I'll hit both buttons here, and then I need to confirm that blockchain fee. So I'll use the right button again until I get to accept and send, 
and then I'll hit both buttons. All right, and so the transaction has gone out. We'll close here. You can see that I have an outgoing transaction. All right, Bitcoin was sent. Now I can go back over to the Engrave app, the Liquid app. All right, and then uh, we can go back here and just wait for the Bitcoin to arrive. All right, so if we go into our Bitcoin wallet here, you can see that there's an incoming transaction in the app. It's going to need to confirm on the blockchain before it shows up in the main balance. But also note, you will not see your balance on the zero device itself. The zero device is for signing transactions mostly. You, and as I mentioned, you can confirm your receiving addresses on this device, but you can't really manage the crypto on this device. You're not going to be able to initiate sends and receives from this device, right? The Liquid app is where you do the main job of managing your crypto, and uh, the zero device is your private key that's completely offline. I went ahead and connected my original charging cable, the one that I'm using from the brick. And you can even uh, tap into the pending transaction and see a little more details on that. While we're waiting for that transaction to uh, confirm on the blockchain, I'll uh, show you how we can also use uh, a desktop-based application to send crypto to this device. And so basically, we'll do another receive, and this time we'll share the address. You have various ways to share, and you can send the address to yourself through email. All right, now we have access to this address on our desktop. Now that I've sent that address to my email, I have access to that Bitcoin address, right? This is the receiving address, right? Um, from here, I can also double check on my Engrave device to make sure that it matches, right? If I wanna look at the zero, just to double confirm that. But I recognize the address, right? So now we have access to the address from various other desktop applications. So I'll go ahead and show you uh, Ledger Live Desktop. Some of you may feel more comfortable on the desktop. Some of you may not have a Ledger Nano X with Bluetooth. So I'll show you how to do this from the desktop. So here we'll go again. We'll go over to a Bitcoin account and we'll do a send. And we'll paste in the Bitcoin address from the engrave, right? There it is again. We'll hit continue again. And then uh, we decide how much Bitcoin to send. Send about 50 here. We'll hit continue. I'm going to need to authorize this on my device. So I'll go ahead and open the Bitcoin app. I'll go ahead and use the metal button to advance over. All right, click approve, and then I'll confirm those blockchain fees. Click accept and send, and off it goes. And as you can see, the Bitcoin has gone out from my ledger live. Let's go over and check over on the Engrave. All right, we can uh, tap into our Bitcoin wallet here. And now we can see that there's two incoming transactions. Now we can do the same thing with any of the other cryptos that we have on here. Uh, for example, Ethereum, we can do a receive and generate a receiving address here. So if you want to take that extra step of hardware verification, you can verify that address on your device and just confirm that that's the same address. That's just that extra step of hardware verification. All right, so uh, as I did last time, I can just share the address with myself. I'll go ahead and uh, send this over to my email so that I will have access to it from my desktop. All right, so there's that Ethereum address that I sent to myself. Once again, if, if I doubt this, I can verify on my hardware device to make sure it's the same one that didn't get messed up between the cuts and paste. Uh, but basically what I want to do is go over to my exchange account and make a withdrawal to that address. So I'm here in my KuCoin account. Uh, we'll go into our funding account and just make a quick withdrawal. All right, I'll paste in my uh, address of my Engrave. All right, I'll select my network as Ethereum ERC20. All right, and I'll just go ahead and send it all. It's a small amount. I would always recommend doing small tests before you send large amounts. Don't send thousands of dollars until you've done a small test. We'll go ahead and choose withdraw here. And I've got some confirmation steps that I'm going to need to go through. 
All right. And off that goes. See, I have an outgoing transaction here. All right, so the Ethereum came in pretty quick. I received that from KuCoin, my exchange. Still waiting for the Bitcoin to confirm on the blockchain. Be patient. Depending on the activity on the blockchain network, uh, could take a little while for it to actually confirm and be spendable, right? But if you can see it as a incoming transaction, rest assured uh, that it is safe and sound in your wallet, right? It's just not ready to be sent back out again. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the setup of the Engrave Zero and Graphene Backup. If you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.